In this video, we're going to be working with a numerical methods problem, an example with the newton raphson method. And what we're going to be doing, this is a pretty long problem and it has multiple parts, but we'll get through it. So the function we're dealing with is 2x cubed minus 7x minus 6. Uh, we want to approximate the root of this function, and we're going to be using the initial guess of 4. All right, so I'll go through the parts A, B, and C just to give an overview of what we'll be doing, and then we'll go through each of the parts individually. So part A, they tell us to perform uh, two iterations and use two decimal places, but do not round until the end of each iteration. So when we're plugging in our xi values into the function and the derivative, we will not round until we get to the very end, until we, until we get to the approximation, and then at that point, at the approximation, that is when we will round to the two decimal places. Okay, so moving on. B, part B, they want us to plot the two approximations on the graph below. So as soon as we find our x of i plus 1 value for the first and the second approximation, we'll just draw a dot on the plot indicating where that is. And this is our graph here below, we'll get to that. And the last thing they want us to do, part C, is calculate the absolute relative approximate error, E sub A, between the first and second approximation. So this is our plot below. Uh, just a quick glance of it. We'll uh, look more at it when we get our uh, actual uh, approximation. So let's get started. Okay, so for part A, let's write out all the important information we were given. Our function value is 2x cubed minus 7x minus 6. And then let's also write the derivative, which is just 6x squared minus 7. And our initial guess is just 4. So that is the information we are given to start with. And we're going to be using this, uh, evaluating this information, the uh, function and the derivative, both at 4, and then plugging that into our approximation formula. So let's do that. f of 4. So to get that, you just plug in 4 for each of the x values, and you'll have 2 times 4 to the third power minus 7 times 4 minus 6, which comes out to be... 94. Okay. All right, and then uh, f prime of 4 will be 6 times 4 squared minus 7, which comes out to be 89. Okay. And we also, so we have these three pieces of information, and I'll write out the general formula to find the approximation for the newton raphson method. It's x of i plus 1 equals x of i minus f of xi all over f prime of xi. Okay, so plugging in our values, we get 4 minus 94 over 89, which is equal to 2.94382. And as the problem said, at the end of the iteration, that is your indication to round. So we're going to take the first two decimal point, uh, places, and we'll get our first approximation is... 
2.94. All right, and we'll do the exact same thing to get the second approximation. All right, so this is still part A, and we just found that x of i plus 1 for the first approximation was 2.94. So now what we're going to do is draw a little tick mark to indicate we're going to the second iteration. So our xi value, we set that now to 2.94, and then we want to find the function value at 2.94, and also the derivative value at 2.94. Okay, so for the function evaluated at 2.94, it's going to be 2 times 2.94 cubed minus 7 times 2.94 minus 6. Okay, and that comes out to be f of 2.94 equals, and if we keep all the decimal places, we'll get... 24.244368. So uh, right here, do not be tempted to round. Keep as many decimal places. Even though they said two, I would recommend having three or even as many decimal places as you can, whatever seems reasonable to you. And we're going to do the same thing for f prime of 2.94. Plug that value into uh, our derivative, and we'll get 6 times 2.94 squared minus 7 comes out to be, if we keep all the decimal places, 44.8616. We then can calculate our x of i plus 1 value, which will be the initial guess or x of i value minus f of x i so f of 2.94 which we has which we have as 24.244368 over f prime of x i which is 44.8616 And remember, let's keep as many uh, decimal places as we can. 2.94 minus 0 0.5404. And at this point, we are allowed to round. We're allowed to round here. And then we'll end up with our second approximation as 2. Point four zero, and notice we use two decimal places here. All right, here we are. So with part B, they said you plot the two approximations on the graph below. So let's look at the graph. All right, the window here is the, this is the y-axis, the x-axis, the y-axis goes up to 100, the x-axis goes to 10, and uh, let's uh, plot those uh, two points. So what you're going to want to do is follow the tick marks on the x-axis to the best of your ability, and we know, let's write part B, we know that our first approximation was 2.94, so that's pretty close to 3, so eyeballing this, I'm going to follow it up to here, and write in number 1, 
x sub i plus 1 is approximately 2.94. All right. So we drew the point, and we'll do the same exact thing for the second point, which is 2.4. So again, follow the tick marks to get as close as you can to 2.4, and write in number 2. X of I plus 1 is approximately 2.40. All right, so we've written both of those. And another thing I want to point out here for you to actually uh, understand this is that our initial guess was up here, x of i equals 4. And what the newton raphson method does is it takes the slope at your uh, initial guess, and it makes a tangent line here, a tangent line, and it follows that and intersects somewhere at the x-axis. And that point of intersection at the x-axis gives you your new approximation and that process is repeated once again we find the tangent follow that to the x-axis and that gives us our approximation again and if we were to repeat this process it would get closer and closer to the actual root value of 2.4 so they didn't ask for that information, and they didn't provide that, but I just wanted you to know for reference so you'd understand where we uh, our approximations were in relation to the actual value and how this was working. So let's calculate part C, the final part of this question, which again said to calculate the absolute relative approximate error. All right, so part C, what is the absolute relative approximate error? So we can write the, the formula for this is x of i plus 1 minus x of i all over x of i plus 1 absolute value times 100 percent okay it might look a little complicated but what essentially this is asking it's one way of defining the difference between two approximations and this is done as a percent so x of i plus 1 represents the your most recent approximation minus your previous approximation over again the most recent approximation absolute value of this multiplied by 100 percent so if we were to write that out in words we would say it is the new approximation minus the old approximation over the new still times 100% and the absolute value bars. All right, so let's write out the important information. Our first and second approximation. We got first 2.94 and then 2.40. All right, those were... Uh, the two approximations we got in the previous parts. So this is our most recent approximation. They want us to compare, they want us to find the absolute relative approximate error going from the first to the second approximation. So if this is our most recent approximation, this is going to be our x of i plus 1 value, and this is just going to be our x of i plus, uh, just our x of i value. So we have our new value and our old value. So plugging this in to our... Uh, formula for the absolute relative approximate error, we get 2.40 minus 2.94 over 
zero times a hundred percent. All right, running out of space, but that's just going to be um, 0.54 over 2.40 times a hundred percent. So let me write that. Alright, so this is what we had left off on the last page, and I rewrote it here. So, simplifying that, we get 0 0.54 over 2.40 times 100%. Alright, which comes out to be 22.5%. So, for part C, our final answer is that we got the absolute relative approximate error of 22.5%. And with each successive iteration, the value of the error should go down. And that should make sense because it'll go down as we converge. Okay. As always, thanks for watching. And uh, if the videos are too slow or too fast, feel free to uh, pause them or fast forward them. Thanks for watching and have a good day.